To change things up a bit this episode, we're going to take a deep dive into European tobacco harm reduction and vaping news. So, ain't nothing to it but to get into it. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for the week ending 7 June 2022. On Friday, May 20th, the European Commission launched a call for evidence to evaluate the legislative framework for tobacco control, a.k.a. It's time to reevaluate TPD. Is Europe going to be tobacco-free by 2040? Or do they need to make some legislative changes to try and make it happen? It's that simple, folks, and you need to do your part by giving them feedback to potentially shape their new legislation. You have until the 17th of June to get your feedback in. Ethra and the UK New Nicotine Alliance have both created pages calling for consumers to leave feedback to the European Union Commission. So here is your chance. There's a link in the description below to the European Commission Call for Evidence page, as well as the Ethra article showing you exactly how you go about completing your submission. Here's some simple tips for responding to the consultation. Number one, you can state your own personal experience and ask for it to be taken into account as evidence of the success of tobacco harm reduction and as a successful public health strategy to take from this point forward. Number two, it is also worth saying exactly how you are going to respond to a ban on flavors and how other people are going to respond to a flavor ban. Because ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what is on the table right now. And number three, you can say what you think the opportunity would be if there was a more positive approach to tobacco harm reduction in the EU. Here's one example. You could easily say how you quit smoking with vaping, and now you use 10 bottles of e-liquid a week. But you wish that you could reduce your carbon footprint by only buying one 120 mil bottle a week instead. It's your story and your testimony. So shape it however you want, but please put your response in. And hopefully it'll make some positive impacts on what the regulations are going to be in Europe from this point forward. Moving on to Germany, BVRA and their article, Consumers Feel Betrayed by Politics. BVRA ran a survey during the month of April 2022. 1,734 consumers answered their online questions. 83% of the responses were from regular consumers like me and you. 14.4% were members of the BVRA, and the rest were members of another consumer organization like CASA or the other CASA. Over 95% said that they mainly use harm-minimized products. 4.7% were dual users. Over 50% said that they use between six and 15 milliliters of e-liquid every single day. 33%, like me, use more than 16 milliliters a day. And 10% said that they use five milliliters or less per day. 83.3% use open tank systems and they make their own coils. 37.9% use pre-made coils in an open tank system. 26% use pod systems, and only 1.5% use heat not burn products like ICOS. A third of the respondents identified as mouth to lung vapors. Another third identified as direct lung vapors. And a third identified as using both. Next, consumers were asked if they knew about the new vaping tax that's gonna be taking place in Germany. It's 16 cents per milliliter starting on July 1 and doubling to 32 cents per milliliter a year from now, plus VAT. That means that a 10 euro base, one liter base, 
of e-liquid is going to jump to 380 euros. Yet there hasn't been any media hype or broad public announcement or even any political debate on this new tax. Only 17.4% of the respondents felt that they were very well informed about the upcoming tax increase. However, half of the respondents said that they know they can get a source of untaxed supplies for PG, VG, and flavorings. Another 25% have a clue where to get untaxed liquid from. And the rest didn't know of any untaxed sources in existence anywhere on the planet. Do you see where this is going, folks? 80% of vapors plan to DIY their liquids using untaxed fluids in Germany. Half of these vapors said that they know what they're doing and they're very familiar with the safety measures needed to continue vaping with DIY liquids. 25% admitted that they don't have a clue or have gaps in their knowledge that could potentially result in something not being safe as it was when they were buying commercial liquids. Sorry, folks, but that's exactly what the survey shows. Regardless, it gets even worse. 1.6% of the people that responded to the survey feel sufficiently informed by German politics. 7% had a description of mixed feelings about the situation. 29.7% said that they're ill-informed about politics. And overall, almost half of these respondents, half of these people feel openly betrayed after taking the survey and finding out about this tax that they're going to start paying next month. Here in the States, we dodged the bullet with the federal per milliliter nicotine tax. In Germany, it passed, and politicians have stayed silent since it happened. What do you think is going to happen on 1 July? I think it's going to get very ugly in the German vape shops when they now have to collect this tax. And consumers of these products that were unaware of these belligerent harmful taxation schemes being implemented are going to have to either choose to cough up the money or start DIYing their own supplies. And we also know what else is going to happen here. German dual users are going to go back to smoking and some German vapors are going to switch to oral smoke-free products while the rest are going to try to DIY for the first time to avoid this ridiculous tax increase. Quite frankly, I wouldn't be surprised if Sweden gets a tourist boost this year as Germans go on holiday to buy snooze. Or vapors start taking holidays in the UK and start bringing back very heavy suitcases home with them full of UK e-liquids. So how about we um, take a look at Finland? Because Finland just passed the revised tobacco tax on May 1st. The new rules obviously are going to affect vaping products, even though it's called a tobacco regulation. Because manufacturers are now required to remove logos from electronic cigarettes and refill containers. Oh, and flavors are also banned in Finland. More illogical regulations to protect the eyes of young people because if they don't see it, well, then they're just not going to go and do it. Let's answer a little question here right along the same lines, okay? The scary packaging 
like you have in Australia, reduce cigarette sales, or is it just harm reduction products that really kill smoking rates? Sig Magazine in Italy has the answer to that question. Shocking images on cigarette packs don't push you to smoke less. Actually, it was an American randomized clinical trial just published in JAMA Network titled Effects of Graphic Warning Labors on Cigarette Packs, Hiding Behavior Among Smokers. They revealed the truth once again. 357 smokers were split into three groups. Regular American packaging, scary-looking packaging, and plain packaging cigarettes. And guess what? Neither the prevalence of smoking nor consumption differed according to the group at any time during this study. However, the scary packaging group did admit to hiding their packs of smokes, obviously to avoid additional shame or stigma that they're going to feel from their friends and family. But it didn't make them smoke any less. And this is verified by biochemical analysis in this scientific study. Moving on to France and the French National Cancer Institute organizing an international scientific conference on electronic cigarettes. They aim to answer two questions. Number one, what are the health impacts? And number two, what is the trajectory for the users of these products. Pre-registration will open on 20 June for the 5 and 6 December conference in Paris. That's Eiffel Tower, Paris, capital of France for you rooted Southern mountain folk out there. How about we switch over to some industry news? Maybe we got something positive to look forward to. What do you say? From Germany and the UK, we find Inican Technology launched Hydrated by Aquos Lab. It's the lot of water-based vaping devices. Aquos Lab's first generation of water-based vape juice, AQ30, supports 30% water content. Water-based vaping delivers smoother vapor and faster satisfaction compared to traditional vaping systems. The extra 30% water content of AQ30 also reduces the dehydrating qualities the typical vapor can cause. Additionally, water-based vapes operate at a lower temperature compared to their traditional counterparts, which allows for greater increased chemical stability during the vaping process. You know how ants cry that it's not water vapor, it's just chemicals you're breathing in? Well, Inikin can now say, you know what, it is water vapor. Well, at least 30% of it is. The rest is just water-soluble ingredients. We talked about this next story before, too. But finally, we get to see the new Vaporesso logo. And move beyond ordinary as Big Sleeps Inc. and 2J Stick Street Artists team up with Vaporesso to launch a unique and first-of-its-kind design for the best-selling X-Ross Nano Vape Kit. The new product launched at the Vapor Expo UK. Wish I had a picture for you, but I wasn't there. I'd tell you to go check out their website, but that would get this video removed. Even though you can't buy anything from their website. However, I can direct you to a YouTube video. It's in the description below. It's less than two minutes long, but you get to see both of these artists talk about their designs and their thinking when they came up with this combined partnership design with Vaporesso. And not to get off track, but I think it's pretty messed up that I can't put Vaporesso's website URL into this video. Even a single frame in a 30 frames per second video is going to get taken down. How do I know? Because I searched my last video that was taken down by YouTube 
and there was only one frame where you could make out any kind of a URL. But Vapressa's YouTube channel and the description for this video has a link to their website. It's the hypocrisy of Google and it's YouTube named Google Video Search Engine. Hey, vape law guy, want to start an antitrust lawsuit against Google slash YouTube? YouTube's community guidelines violate antitrust laws, forcing a Google monopoly. It's not about protecting the community of YouTube viewers. Every single prohibited URL, aka blacklisted link on YouTube, is 100% accessible on Google. YouTube is forcing viewers to use their parent company to find the actual link that is banned on YouTube to protect the viewers. In any country besides the United States, we would call this censorship. But in the United States, it's shrugged off as just capitalism. Hey, Team YouTube, you can't actually buy anything on Vaporesso's product website. And you can't actually buy anything on Lost Vapes product website either. It's no different than going to Google.com because you can get the exact same information. Sorry for the rant, folks. But I'm still waiting for Team YouTube to reply. And my wife says, they're never going to reply to you. They're never going to tell you why your last video was removed. I searched it. I spent hours upon hours looking to try and figure out where in this video was there a link that somebody could actually see to the manufacturer's website. I looked through everything I had, trying to find it. The only thing that had a link that I couldn't even read without a magnifying glass was the user manual. So I took the video and I put it into my video editor, blew it up to three times magnification to look at just that user manual section and went through it frame by frame because it was sped up at eight times speed. One frame. There was only one frame where you could kind of make out the URL. Only a computer would be able to see this link. No human being without going through the painstaking process of downloading the video from YouTube, putting it into an editor, blowing the thing up, magnifying it, and looking at it frame by frame would be able to find that URL link. But it was still removed. Sorry for the rant, folks. Let's get back to the news, shall we? All right. So, speaking of the Vapor Expo UK, so sold to light up the disposable e-cigarette future at Vapor Expo UK. So Soul, a fast-growing disposable vape brand, showcased its stylish, subtle flavored vaping products, X7000, XS600, and Y650, as well as a wide range of cutting-edge vaporizer products in Europe's biggest vaping event, the Vapor Expo UK. So Soul X7000 Amazing Launch. The X7000 So Soul's premium series of 2022 disposable devices is as excellent as it looks. Using ergonomic design, it creates a comfortable grip and a pure aesthetic visual impact from the elegant body waves to the cratered texture. Supporting 7,000 puff counts, the X7000 brings advanced users a perfect value for their money while experiencing the evolved professional experience of vaping from mesh coil technology. It also provides users with more than 21 flavors that are refreshing, sweet, savory, and everything in between. From watermelon ice, mixed berry ice, blueberry ice, spearmint, blue ras lemonade, to lemon strawberry pie, banana coconut, strawberry watermelon bubble gum, there is something for everyone. I need to get my hand on some of these and see if it's really that good 
Or is this just some marketing hype? All right, all right, all right. Time to get back to European news affecting the vapors over there. Jumping over to Spain, concerns have been raised over a draft law that would restrict the sale of nicotine vape products to tobacconist shops only. Anis Vape President Angles Mutares Prim Lafita said, it is as if a person who is rehabilitated from alcoholism is now going to be forced to go buy a soft drink at a distillery. The president of the Union of Promoters and Entrepreneurs of Vaping, UPEV, Arturo Ribes, told Efegro on Wednesday that this rule pulls an entire sector in favor of a monopoly that already exists, which is tobacco. When the main scientific institutions worldwide recognize that vaping has nothing to do with tobacco. Ribes explains that this rule, tobacco companies get e-cigarette customers to go to the tobacconists selling their products, where they're not only going to find the electronic cigarettes they came for, they're also going to find tobacco. More like electronic cigarettes in addition to forced temptation by sweet, fragrant tobacco. Talk about morally bankrupt monopoly regulation. There's an ansvapchange.org petition to save vape shops in Spain in the description below. If you want to help move this petition along, go check out the link. They still need another 2,000 signatures to hit their 7,500 signature goal. And yes, I saved the best for last. Naturally, it's the Bloomberg slash FDA World Health Organization. Two former World Health Organization officials have identified harm reduction as the missing link in the global body's tobacco control policy, especially considering the number of tobacco users worldwide has barely changed since their treaty was implemented 17 years ago. They had their comments published in The Lancet. And Grim Green already talked about it on his last vlog, so I'm not going to get into it today. There's a link in the description if you're interested to go read it. It's one page, but it basically says what we already know. Tobacco harm reduction works. Vaping saves lives. And if you actually want to change the number of smokers around the globe, you need to adopt it into your policies and your framework. So you're probably wondering, why did I say Bloomberg slash FDA World Health Organization? We all know about Bloomberg's ties and how he just shoves money into things that he wants to see happen. But the United States FDA? What does the FDA have to do with the World Health Organization? The United States isn't even a signatory on the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. That's a great question. And you don't need a conspiracy hat because it's actually public knowledge. The FDA, through its NIH grants, has been paying for Tobacco Global Tobacco Regulators Forum. It's a meeting every single year, secret, top secret meeting by all the tobacco regulators around the globe. They have two five-year agreements totaling over $7 million for this Global Tobacco Regulators Forum. You know, you thought COP9 was such a secret. How about this global forum that takes place every single year Compliments of the United States Food and Drug Administration to plan implementation of the FCTC. This is a deep rabbit hole. Compliments of copwatch.info and Clive Bates' website, The Counterfactual. If you ever wonder why it seems like countries seem to just continually fall in line with a bunch of crazy taxes, banning flavors, eliminating vape shops, well, now you know exactly why. You know, when I first started investigating the vaping news to make this content for YouTube, I couldn't believe how the scene 
consistently look like a line of dominoes falling one after the other, one state after the other, one country after the other, mimicking bans and taxes and new legislation. We all wrote it off as just, you know, Bloomberg's henchmen sending lawyers to draft a language for all these new laws. Well, here we find out that the FDA is playing an integral part in making all of this happen. There's links in the description below if you want to fall into the rabbit hole with me and find out what's really going on around us every single day. Speaking of rabbit holes, here's another rabbit hole for you. Another homeless cessation support study published in BMC Health Services Research. Naturally, it was taking place over in the UK because they have a vested interest in the actual health outcomes of their population. A team led by University College London's Dr. Sharon Cox asked 99 individual homeless services across the UK how they go about to support reducing smoking through various policies and cessation support options that they offer the homeless that they serve. The paper contains powerful support for vaping and highlights the need for additional action. Owing to the complex nature of homelessness and needs of the people experiencing it, research shows that smoking takes low priority in the assessment of health needs. Homeless center staff and their clients report the view that smoking is beneficial because it is seen as relieving stress and providing comfort. Those are all things we can relate to as former smokers. There is also a firmly held belief that people experiencing homelessness don't want to quit smoking or would not take up the offer of support if it was given. Consequently, Smoking cessation is not seen as a high priority for these people. The Royal College of Physicians 2021 stated that e-cigarettes are an effective treatment for tobacco dependency and that their use should be included and encouraged in all treatment pathways. Direct quote from this paper. I'll spare you the details. For the rest of it, but it all boiled down to the fact homeless smokers, when you ask them, reported that their previous attempts to quit smoking were unaided, had no help whatsoever, and 75% of them actually want to quit smoking and feel bad that their last quit attempts were short-lived until during this study, they were offered vaping products to quit smoking. They noted that vaping is viewed more positively by people considering quitting smoking while experiencing homelessness, and that the use of e-cigarettes fits in well with centers that already offer harm reduction approaches for sexually transmitted diseases and opioid addictions, while some centers support vaping, others completely ban it alongside smoking, despite the guidance that they get from the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence in England. This said, there were clear areas of excellence. Specifically at one center, those in the cigarette intervention created a vaping community and a vaping drop-in service was offered by the staff. It just goes to show you that even in the UK, there isn't a single consensus of adopting tobacco harm reduction to end smoking. Might have something to do with the World Health Organization and the FDA publishing misinformation every single chance that they get. The WHO updated their e-cigarette page 
And much like the previous versions, the page is littered with false and highly misleading information. And naturally, Clive Bates is right on top of this and published an article critiquing the WHO Q&A page. Care to guess what he titled it? Fake news alert! Who updates its post-truth fact sheet on e-cigarettes? The World Health Organization continues to present misleading information about e-cigarettes that spreads doubt and confusion among the public, media, and policymakers. This post reviews its latest Q&A and finds multiple errors of analysis, misleading statements, and obvious biases. Are e-cigarettes dangerous? Really? Like it's a light switch? Flip it on, it's dangerous. Flip it off, it's not dangerous. If the question itself isn't bias rearing its ugly head, I don't know what is. Anyway, there's a link in the description. If you want to read Clive Bates tearing apart the World Health Organization disinformation page on vaping. All it does is get me worked up to see this going on out there. And to think, 8 million smokers a year are dying needlessly because of this misinformation. So how about we head back to Germany and see what other news there is. Deutsch World reports, Mexico banned sale of vaping devices. Vaping and e-cigarettes have been banned from sales in Mexico, with expanded restrictions on smoking and vaping right around the corner. Mexico has banned the sale of vaping devices as authorities say they are concerned about the health effects of vaping. The move was announced by President Manuel Lopez Obrador on World No Tobacco Day and was accompanied by several other measures aimed at clamping down on smoking in public places. This is not what I thought that this episode of Vaping News is going to look like. I'm sorry, folks. I just report what I find. And unfortunately, it's kind of hard sometimes to find anything positive to talk about. But that's life today. And most people don't take the time to even learn what's going on right around them. So how about we head back to the United States? Surely we can find one piece of good news in the United States. Smokers who switch to vaping may take up healthier routines, new University of Washington study shows. Rick Kosterman, a UW researcher, would never say that vaping is good. Why not? If that's what the facts show, whatever. But a new University of Washington study shows smokers who switch to e-cigarettes, may have more opportunities for healthier choices. That doesn't mean that vaping is healthful, researchers said, but for people who already smoke and aren't able to quit, it can be associated with healthy routines. The study was funded by the National Cancer Institute, the National Institute on Aging, and the National Institute on Drug Abuse. The co-authors of the study stressed e-cigarettes have substantial public health downsides, including popularity among young people, particularly those not previously addicted to nicotine. The study, however, focused on asking whether vaping can be beneficial to existing smokers who are unable to quit because none of the pharmaceutical products actually do anything for you except give you side effects. That part wasn't in the paper. Sorry. Commentary. For the study, Kosterman and his co-authors, Marina Epstein, Jennifer Bailey, and David Hawkins, connected with a group of 800 Seattleans who are part of the landmark study that began back in 1985 when they were elementary school students. The University of Washington study focused on 156 of those participants. This subsample reported smoking combustible cigarettes at age 30 and smoking or vaping at age 39. 
Of the 156 participants, 64% smoked only combustible cigarettes at age 39, 28% smoked and vaped, and 8% only vaped. The roughly one-third of the group that shifted to vaping, some or all of the time by age 39, reported better physical health, exercised more, and had more active social engagement, the study found. Although the study cannot show a causal relationship, we think that because e-cigarettes have less stigma, who did they ask to get that answer? Sorry, less odor and are less physically harmful, they may increase health-promoting opportunities among smokers, according to Kosterman. People who use e-cigarettes may be more likely to be in settings that promote physical activity and to interact with more non-smokers. What we're saying is that e-cigarettes do have a positive role for existing adult smokers who continue to use nicotine. Well, sorry, I wouldn't classify that as actual really good news, but I guess it's the best we can do and it's the best that we can get in the censored United States media. And I know we're running long, folks, but there is one more news article that I think we should cover. French expert says nicotine does not cause cancer. Asks Filipino doctors to consider smoke-free alternatives. Published in the Manila Bulletin, a leading cancer expert said nicotine is not the cause of cancer and encouraged Filipino medical professionals to consider less harmful, smoke-free products as a strategy to fight against smoking-related diseases in the Philippines. If you want to reduce exposure to carcinogens, you must identify the nature, production, and exposure source of the carcinogens, said Dr. David Kayat during a virtual presentation before members of the Philippine Medical Association. He tackled the topic, smoking, cancer, and tobacco harm reduction during the 115th PMA annual convention and scientific meetings held between May 19th and the 22nd. He noted that nicotine is not a source of cancer. Smokers commonly misperceive that nicotine is the major carcinogen, said Dr. Kayat, who is a professor of oncology at Pierre at Marie Curie University and head of medical oncology at Let Petit Sapetier Hospital in Paris. Sorry, I don't speak French. He added that it is contrary to the conclusion of Cancer Research UK, which found that nicotine is not responsible for the harmful effects of smoking. Why is this guy so passionate about clarifying nicotine does not cause cancer? He's an oncologist and he sees plenty of people that are now cancer patients that he has to treat. 64% of his cancer patients who smoke continue smoking after getting the diagnosis. As long as misinformation keeps brainwashing legislators, doctors, and the public, we will never become a healthier society. He said the fight against cancer should involve reducing exposure to the known carcinogens. The current anti-smoking policies, which revolve around bans and increasing taxes, have failed to address the problem of smoking cigarettes which contains more than 6,000 chemicals and ultra-fine ultra, ultra particles that damage the DNA, including 80 carcinogens or potential carcinogens. Dr. Kayat said that if prohibition or ban on smoking was not working, which it obviously isn't, how many years do we have to keep doing the exact same prohibition and taxes and and nothing changes. Sorry, more ad lib commentary. It is the responsibility of the medical professionals to provide alternatives. 
that reduce harm from smoking. And these should include innovative products such as electronic cigarettes, heated tobacco products, and snus. He goes on in the article talking about all the scientific studies that have clearly demonstrated tobacco harm reduction works and vaping saves lives. In a perfect world, the dream is to eliminate smoking and therefore all smoking-related diseases. But we already know that's not possible. Sorry, more ad-lib commentary. Let me read the quote. If not possible, I think we have to take decision based on science and not on emotion or opinion, he said. All right. Sorry about that. I get passionate about this because I truly care. I truly want to make a difference. Just have to get the truth out there. So that wraps up the Global 20 Vape Science Advocacy News for the week ending June 7th, 2022. If you found this video helpful and you like the content, please hit the like button below. Or if you thought this review sucked, this video sucked, hit that button, whatever you want to do. Either way, it's time to wrap this up and do something fun for a change. Start filming some more reviews. I'm not quitting. I'm not going away until they force me to. So until next time, I hope you all have a fantastic day. Please be good to each other. And keep on vaping. The extra 30% water content of AQ30 also reduces the hydrating qualities that typical vapor can cause. The dehydrating quality, not the hydrating qualities. Uh, of 2022 disposable devices is an excellent one of these days one of these days I'm going to do this without having to make 15,000 cuts <laughs>